Last time I left you hanging. We trained a model, but how do we use it? Welcome to this video on Azure Machine Learning. My name is Kevin Fiesel. I'm the proprietor of Catalyxy Services LLC, a consulting firm which specializes in work all across the data platform space, especially SQL Server. In the prior video, we trained a code-first Azure ML model. In this video, we're gonna finish the job, so to speak, by deploying an inference script and generating predictions against multiple files containing thousands of rows. Because we have a relatively large number of records to score, we are going to use the batch scoring technique for this code-first model rather than deploying a real-time inference endpoint. So let's jump back into the code and finish what we've started. We are back in Visual Studio Code, looking at the pipeline folder. Last time around, we looked at most of these scripts. This time around, it'll be a bit easier for us as we only have two files to open. Let's open the main script, deployscore.py. This script is just under 160 lines long and the first 32 handle importing various packages and objects. There isn't too much new here, so let's scroll down to where things start to get exciting. I'm going to use the CS Azure ML workspace and my compute cluster is named CPU cluster. Then on lines 44 and 45, I'll load up the Azure ML client and workspace. After that, we have a block from lines 47 to 80, ensuring that my compute cluster exists. It does, so let's just keep scrolling down to line 84. On line 84, we specify the endpoint as Chicago parking tickets batch. Now let's switch over to Azure ML for a moment. We're on the Endpoints tab. From there, I navigated to the Batch Endpoints page, and we can see one batch endpoint available to us, Chicago Parking Tickets Batch. If I select that endpoint, we can see some details about it. On the right-hand side, we can see that the provisioning state is succeeded, so everything looks good here. That's all I need to look at in Azure ML for now, so let's return to Visual Studio Code. Line 85 starts a try accept block in which we try to load that batch endpoint. If I didn't have it created already, the accept block would create it for me. Then on line 96, we load the Chicago parking tickets code first model. That's the model we'll use for scoring against this batch endpoint but we need to get one more thing, a deployment. Deployments run against batch endpoints and provide details about how we want the service to process our incoming data. Let's dig into the accept block for a moment here. On line 106, we prep an environment. We're going to use a built-in environment based on scikit-learn 1.0 and Python 3.8 running on Ubuntu 2004. Then in the deployment, we specify the endpoint, model, and environment on lines 110 through 112, respectively. On 113, we create a new code configuration, which tells the service that our scoring file is in the scripts directory and is called scoremodel.py. Keep that file name in mind, as we'll get back to it shortly. On line 114, we specify the compute cluster we want to use for deployment, and then lines 115 through 123 cover deployment settings. In here, we can see how many instances we want to run and how many files each instance will process concurrently. In order to ensure that we don't run out of memory, we use a set of mini batches. So I'm going to specify 10 files per batch, and we want to add rows to a file called predictions.csv as our output. On line 121, we see the batch retry settings, which is helpful when knowing that sometimes services fail because of resource constraints rather than systemic problems. And so the best answer is wait a bit and try again. Then on line 125, we create the deployment. Line 128 makes our new deployment the default and updates the endpoint to specify this. That's a lot of talk about deployments. Now let's talk data. Line 133 points us to the data path. If we look over there in VS Code, we see two files, Chicago Parking Tickets 1.csv and Chicago Parking Tickets 2.csv. Both files have the same format, so I'll open up file two. 
we can see that the first row has a header, and this is a comma-separated list of attributes. Scrolling all the way to the right, we do not have payment is outstanding in our scoring file, but we do have the things we think make sense for prediction based on the model that we trained in the prior video. This is a subset of columns and represents data in our cleaned up format. If we needed to, we could use the pre-processing steps we used for training here as well, but to make life easier, I'm gonna skip that pre-processing and just say that we can get the data the way that we want it, rather than needing to do pre-processing to get that data into the state we need. But how do we get these files someplace where Azure ML can read them? Well, we have a few approaches. One way, and the way that I would recommend, is to push them into an Azure storage account. This is the way that I would use for regularly changing data, like daily digests of records to store, so let's do just that. To do so, I'm going to make sure that we have an Azure ML data set that we can use for the job. Specifically, the data set is called Chicago Parking Tickets Unlabeled, and if it does not exist, we create the data set as a folder and then upload these two CSV files. Switching back to Azure ML for a moment, let's navigate to the Data tab in the Assets menu section. In here, I can see the Chicago Parking Tickets Unlabeled Data Asset. I'll select it and see what's in here. We can see that this ultimately resolves to the Data Store Workplace Blob Store, which we know is the blob storage container Azure ML created for us. Inside this storage account, we can see the relative path of local upload, followed by a GUID without hyphens, and then data. I can select this link to open it up in the Azure portal. Doing so takes me to a file listing, and we can see the two files already in here. If I wanted to drop more files in, this is where I'd do it. Anyhow, we've confirmed the existence of the relevant folder, so let's switch back to Visual Studio Code and keep on keeping on. We know that we have the data set in place, so now all that's left to do is invoke the batch endpoint. I have a very important comment on lines 150 through 152. If you are running this command locally, you might get back an error with the phrase by underscore policy in it. If you do, the most likely cause is that your account is not an owner on the Azure ML workspace. Even if you own the subscription, which is likely if you're just trying this out on your own dime or using a Visual Studio Enterprise subscription, you'll need to grant that right explicitly. To do so, let's switch over to the Azure portal. We are in the Azure portal looking at my CS Azure ML workspace. I've navigated to Access Control, or IAM, in the menu. I'm now going to select the Role Assignments tab. In here, we can see that I've explicitly granted myself owner rights on the workspace, even though I have it by default from owning the subscription. If you need to do this yourself, select the Add button and choose the Add Role Assignment. Switch menus to the Privileged Administrator Roles and then choose Owner. Then, in the Members tab, you can select your account and finish the job in the Review and Assign tab. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code once again. Line 154 is going to kick off our scoring job, invoking the batch endpoint and sending the unlabeled Chicago dataset folder in. On line 156, we will stream results, blocking the console until the ML job finishes. Then, on line 158, we download the results into a score folder. But before I kick off this command, we have one more Python script to navigate, score underscore model dot pi. Opening that file up, we see that it looks a bit different from the other files in the scripts folder. In it, we have two functions, init and run. The init function is where we load up the model we are going to use. There is a global call in here, similar to static in C-sharp. Don't at me about that. Uh, we then load up the workspace for our environment, grab the model details, and load our model from the artifacts we saved in the Azure ML model registry. Then, we call the run method on line 19. But what's actually happening is Azure ML sends in some number of mini batches. We create a pandas data frame to concatenate all of the rows in these batch files together and turn it into one data set. Then I call the predict function on that data set to generate predictions. The predictions themselves are just simple zeros and ones with no label, no explanation. 
In order to make this all make sense, I'm going to convert the resulting list into a single column pandas data frame and name the column payment is outstanding. Then I'll return the payment is outstanding column and call it a day. As we can see, this pair of scoring functions doesn't really tell the entire story. Clearly there's some code that Azure ML is running behind the scenes, which loads this file and calls the init and run functions on its own, but we don't create that code. When we're ready to kick it all off, we can navigate to a terminal and run python deploy-score.py. I'm running this from an Anaconda Python command script as that's where I've got the Azure CLI and Azure ML SDK v2 libraries set up. As it runs, we can see some diagnostic information pop up on screen, indicating that we already have our cluster and endpoint, that we retrieved the model, and that we have a deployment and a data set. Given that I've run this before, that all makes sense. I also have a URL I can go to to see how things are going, but what I'll do here is speed up time so that we don't have to sit here at a command prompt waiting for things to finish. Okay, now that the job is complete, we can see our results in the console. It took a while for this to complete, but we now have one more file in our pipeline folder, predictions.csv. Remember that this is the file we were appending to in the scoring job. Opening it up, we can see our delimiter is actually a space. So any strings which have spaces in them are now wrapped in quotation marks. There are no headers, but the order of columns is the same as our input, so we could use that as the foundation. Finally, on the right hand side, we have the payment is outstanding prediction as a zero or a one. And that's exactly what we wanted to get out of this. We can then take this data set and import it into a database or reshape it for further analysis or compare the predictions to actual results if we happen to have them. But I'd say we've done enough for today. That's all I've got for this video. We took the model we trained in the prior video and performed batch scoring on it, generating results for thousands of tickets across two files. The plan over the next couple of videos is to see how we can automate this process. We'll talk a bit about machine learning operations and then perform a simple implementation. We'll have links and show notes in the description below. And until we see each other in the next video, take care.